Welcome to my Leagues 5 Raging Echo strategy slash relic review slash mentally ill rambling. I wanted to wait until after all the reveals since each and every teaser had the potential to completely shake up my plans. Honestly, pretty much the same as they were a week ago. But speaking of plans, unlike other RuneScape creators, I'm not forced into going for my fifth dragon trophy or grinding 24 seven for rank one. In fact, most of my plans revolve around dumb meme ideas and I likely won't even be doing raids at all, much less farming for a mega raid. So what is my genius goal for this league? Well, it's something incredibly stupid. I want to one-shot bosses. More specifically in this case, something I'm deeming fairly achievable. I want a one-shot Vorkath. That's right, I'll be gambling melee echo procs or hit a whopping 750 damage in a single hit to this bad boy. There are a few reasons why I decided on this goal, Vorkaf specifically and all that, but before I go over my insane plan along with some other of the dumb ideas that I came up with, here are my thoughts on all the relics, echo items, masteries, passives, and pretty much everything else I can think of. Obviously, these are just my opinions. Feel free to go with whatever sounds fun to you, even if that means you're going to take two teleport relics. I, I don't know why you do that, but uh, that's what you want to do. Go for it. Starting off with the combat masteries, these are completely separate from relics and should be attainable fairly early on. You get 10 total points with a max of 6 in each style, so this allows you to go hybrid if that's more of your thing. These points can be earned in any order, but the tasks are to defeat the giant, defeat 10 monsters with a combat level of 100 or higher, this can be the same monster by the way, defeat Scurrious solo, defeat a monster with a slayer requirement of 55 or higher, defeat Jad, reach a combat level 100, defeat one echo boss, two unique echo bosses, and three unique echo bosses, and finally defeat Zuck. In my case, the first six points are completely free, as hell. Eight should be pretty free depending on how hard the echo bosses actually end up being, and the last two, which in my case are Zuck and the Echo Coliseum, may be doable, but I'm definitely not going to plan around it. Now I'm not going to go into detail for every single style and tier, but the biggest takeaway I have from these is that tier 6 range never miss is really freaking good. Melee isn't amazing because it's chance based, but going for a lottery hit can be fun sometimes, and mage is overall just kind of weird. As for the passives, tier 1 gives you a 95% chance to save weapon charges, ammo, and runes. I'm assuming this also means non-combat spells as well like teleports, but either way an insane quality of life almost immediately for all your styles. Tier 2 increases healing by 20%, not the biggest difference, but this means something like sharks will heal 24 instead of 20, which is definitely nice to have. Tier 3, accuracy with all styles is increased by 100%. Keep in mind this is a 100% increase, not a guaranteed accuracy, so in most cases just like double. Whether that means for a boss you're going to be just like 2% more accurate or whatever, depends on your setup. Passive Tier 4, damage taken is reduced by 15%. Self-explanatory, not a game changer, but yet again, nice to have. Tier 5 is prayer point gain from all sources increased by 25%. Yet again, not a game changer. Like 2-7 to seven extra prayer points from a potion depending on your prayer level. 16 extra from a prayer regen or something like that. Not bad. And finally for tier 6, a little weird, attacks now have 60% prayer penetration. Honestly, unless a big surprise like echo bosses use protection prayers or you're fighting a few slick bosses like the cow fight queen or something. This is a pretty lackluster passive and definitely makes going 5-5 or something like that a lot more viable. Alright, that's the combat masteries done and dusted. Let's quickly go over the echo bosses since I've mentioned them twice now. This time around, all of your region choices also come with its very own buffed echo boss. I don't really know how hard they're going to be, so I would definitely take that into consideration. Keep that in mind when you're picking your regions, but... Each boss comes with its own unique drop, or two depending on, you know, which one it is. As Garnia gets to fight Echo Cerberus, which drops the Dog Sword. Basically all the God Swords shoved together into one. Would be a 10 out of 10 if it made your character bark when you spec, but as far as I know it doesn't do that. So, 9 out of 10. Desert gets to fight the Echo Calphite Queen, which drops the Dragor Blowpipe. If you're going tier 6 range, this is actually weaker than the normal Blowpipe, but a very strong weapon regardless. Also frees up taking turn 1, so there's that. Mortenia has the Echo Grotesque Guardians, which drop one of my favorite items hands down, the Gloves of the Damned. Not only are these basically Barrel's Gloves that count as an Amulet of Dam for those effects, they also double all of the set effects and Amulet of the Dam effects. Double damage Derox, double defense Torags, double shot Carol's Crossbow, you name it. Definitely a big fan of this one. Wilderness gets to fight the Echo King Black Dragon. This is the first boss with two unique drops, the Thunder Kopesh and the Thousand Dragon Ward. The ward grants you immunity to uh, that literally everything, I guess. I don't know what it doesn't, I, honestly. 
and is incredibly strong stat-wise. And then the Thunder Kopesh attacks twice and has a Lightning Bolt attack if you successfully land a hit and an AoE spec. Honestly, if I didn't dislike Wilderness content, this would have been a top tier pick for me. But, you know, I, I don't like Wilderness and there's a lot of griefing because it's just like pointless PKing like, for the first two days or whatever. It's going to suck like last leagues. So I've heard. Kandran gets... Um... Yeah, yeah, we don't really talk about that around here. Actually, a pile of garbage. Maybe somebody will prove that wrong. But to me, even if they added Kandran as a free region, I don't think I would even use this. Fremnik, of course, gets the Echo Dagonoth Kings. While the items they drop are extremely boring, basically just stats, they are better than, um, I mean, while they're better than Bess and Slot for literally everything, every style, defensively, tied Bess and Slot prayer bonus, hard to pass up, honestly. Gauntlet fans get to fight the Echo Hunliff, which drops the Crystal Blessing. This makes it so that Crystal Armor bonuses apply to all melee weapons whilst equipped. Numerically, this is very strong, but unfortunately for me, this means you will have to farm out full Crystal, and you cannot stack it with any set effects like Barrows or Perilous Moons. And since I kind of want to do both of those things to try them out, um, not for me. Corinne the Pickers, this league will get this funny little Echo plant to pick. Echo Hespori, which drops the Nature's Reprisal. On paper, seems kind of bad, but a decent tribrid weapon with a 7 tile melee range. That's pretty funny, need I say more? Last but not least, we have the hardest Echo boss of them all, Echo Soul Herodit. Dropping two incredibly fun items, the Sunlight Spear and the Sunlit Bracers. Bracers are pretty good, but their main attraction is all healing received is increased by 100%. This does stack with other boosts like the passive I mentioned earlier, so 44 health from sharks. And the Sunlight Spear, very, very fun gimmick for the spec. Every attack stacks up to a max of 20, and then the spec uses 7 to unleash a AoE hit. 3 tile radius, damage is increased by 3% prayer bonus, but I will say that Crystal Armor with the Echo Blessing is more damage than maximum prayer gear, but if I knew I could actually complete Echo Soul Heredit, I would build around this a thousand percent, it looks super fun. Now let's talk about the Relics and League passives. Starting off with tier number 1, these are all the things you get immediately, 0 points required. League XP multiplier 5 times. Two times drop rate for certain items. You can check this on the wiki, but basically just unique items. Minigame points are boosted by four times. Run energy never drained. And all clue scrolls will drop as stackable boxes, meaning you can, in fact, AFK clues to your heart's content. Really quick, I forgot to go over these other changes, so I'm just going to throw them in here now. Um, minigame modifier affects Marks of Grace, Hallowed Marks, Brimhaven Vouchers, and Stardust, which is pretty interesting. Drop rate modifier affects the Twisted Ancestral Color Kits, Holy Ornament Kits, Sanguine Ornament Kits, and Awakener's Orbs, which is actually something really nice if you were wanting to use Leagues as Awakener Boss practice. And finally, every clue scroll you receive, including clue geodes, clues in a bottle, and clue nests, are now stackable clue boxes as well. This means that thieving is no longer the absolute hands down king for clues, but I mean, it's still really, really good. As for the relic choices, Power Miner, Lumberjack, and Animal Wrangler. The gist of these is that they're mega turbo buff, non-degradable crystal tools with some other perks like auto banking. To me, it seems like Lumberjack is probably the weakest. Woodcutting's already super AFK, fire making's fairly fast with the XP multipliers and AFK bought with bonfires if you really, really don't like it. Um, fletching is turbo quick, especially if you have the money to just buy broad arrows or whatever. Power Miner is the most interesting to me. Roxy Mine will not deplete until you've mined four ores. Auto gem cutting sounds pretty cool, but realistically, crafting is super free in leagues. Smithing, if you're taking Desert for Giants Foundry or Fremenic for the Blast Furnace, I don't think this has a lot of value. And finally, if you really hate mining, you can just AFK shooting stars in League, which is actually what I did last League. But last but not least, Animal Wrangler, which I think is going to be my pick for this League. The Hunter aspect is nice. Honestly, to me, a bit overrated. I don't think Chens are really worthwhile in Leagues, but what I really care about here is that it completely solves my food for the entire League. Early on, I can go for something like Trout, and then later I can just stack a bunch of Sharks for free. And if you really, really wanted to, you can 6-hour AFK Karambons while sleeping. Just hold down the arrow key with like a rock or some shit. I don't think that's bannable. If it is, <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Any of these relics are a good pick, and honestly, I don't think you can actually go wrong here. Moving on to tier 2, though. The only passive we have here is increasing that XP multiplier from 5 all the way up to 8 times. As for the relic choices, we're already getting into some really good stuff here, except for corner cutter relic, which is kind of lackluster in my opinion. Choosing this relic gives you the Sage's Grease, which grant agility experience while running based off of your agility level, guaranteed success for agility actions, double course completions with the bonus experience, 
Double drops. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed running circles around the Lumbridge Fountain last league for AFK 99 agility, but with nerfed lap amounts for the tasks, no clue how nerfed that is by the way, so I could eat this statement later, infinite run energy built in, and some really nice alternatives for agility training this time around, I don't see a lot of value in taking this relic. Speaking of value though, friendly forager. Initially I thought it was kind of interesting, but it seemed very weak. But after some Discord notes clarification, it became a very, very spicy relic. Choosing this relic gives you the Forager's Pouch, essentially a cracked out herb sack, but not only that, when you gather resources from woodcutting, fishing, mining, and or hunter, every nine ticks, you will find and store a random grimy herb. Not only that though, if you fill up the sack with garbage herbs like guams, you won't be finding any guams anymore. Assuming near max efficiency, you can expect around 650 targeted herbs an hour. Early game prayer pots? Check. Weird pots like prayer renewals and goading potions? Check. Oh yeah, you also create 4 dose potions instead of 3, and you have a 90% chance to not use your secondary ingredients. Which does stack with the mixology goggles, landing you with around a 99% chance to save on secondaries. Honestly, a very strong relic for just tier 2, and the only real downside is that are, are you gonna actually need that many potions in a temporary league? Probably not. As for the last relic, one of my favorites in the entire league actually, at least on paper, Dodgy Deals. Pickpocketing an NPC will also pickpocket nearby NPCs of the same type in an 11 by 11 radius. Unfortunately, this does not massively boost your experience, and for my limited investigating, most areas are gonna have like 2-6 to six NPCs in that range max. But pretty much a double or triple loot for most of the things that really matter, like blood shards. You also get a 100% success rate on all thieving checks, which means some quirky potential for locked chests. Hard targets like Vyres won't suck absolute eggs, etc. Automatically re-pickpocket an NPC or stall, which is probably the best thieving quality of life in existence. Just look at Varlamore Wealthy Citizens, honestly that is my jam. Stackable pickpocketing loot is noted. Keep in mind things like him members still have items that do not stack, so it will get clogged eventually. And you do have coin pouches, but you do get three times the coin pouch stack, which is nice. I would rather not have them at all, but you know, prevents insane abuse, I guess. And finally, stall never depletes, which initially I thought could be very powerful with certain stalls like maybe seed stalls. However, that loot doesn't stack since it's from a stall, and other players without this relic can steal from the stall and make it disappear, which is, um, you know, just kind of griefing potential. Not very fun, but overall I really, really like this relic. Also, as an added bonus from some Discord information, apparently underwater thieving with this relic is going to be like 2 million agility XP an hour without flippers and like 6 million with flippers or some crazy amount like that. So like, if you were into doing that and you were thinking about picking the Sage's Greaves relic, I would just not, but you know, that's just me. Moving on to tier 3, which brings an insanely strong passive. Combat experience, including hit points and prayer, has a 2 times multiplier, which does in fact stack with the normal league's multiplier, meaning at this tier already, you will be earning 16 times the combat experience. Something important to keep in mind is that this league, XP from Soul Wars and Pest Control is disabled, so you won't be choosing those skills and maxing them very, very easily. You also get 5x Slayer points, superiors unlock for free, and an increased superior rate of 1 in 50. As for the relics themselves, this is the Teleport tier, Fairy's Flight, Bank Heist, and Clue Compass. I'm just going to be very quick. The Clue Compass has teleports very close to banks, like two tiles in Shiloh Village, which devalues taking Bank Heist to me. Kinda close-ish to Fairy Rings and Spirit Trees, although I think there are some just normal teleports to those within a decent range. But more importantly, it has some really cheesy teleports like directly to Clue Steps, straight to the Barrow's Chest, to the barrels guy. I'm definitely taking this hands down. At the very least, if you're taking bake heist, you're crazy to me. Or maybe I'm the crazy one. Who even knows? Tier 4 sees the last passive buff to drop rate, 5x, and minigame points 8 times. We also have some more really, really difficult relic decisions. Kinda. Golden God, free automatic passive high alk that doesn't get interrupted or interrupt other actions, including during combat, and has a 65% chance to not consume the item. What is effectively pay to win prayer training and select items from shops can be noted. Really tough one here for me because half of these effects are devalued by other choices and passives, but at the same time, potentially millions if not billions of GP per hour passively solves like seven viable skills. I don't, I don't know. The Reloaded Relic lets you choose another relic from any previous tier. This 
makes it even tougher. To me, this is kind of strong, but you probably won't be taking a second teleport relic. Second tier one for another tool is kind of maybe okay-ish. Grabbing another tier two is really nice, but I kind of wish tier four and five got swapped. As for the last relic, Equilibrium. Each time you gain experience, you gain additional XP equal to 10% of your total level. Keep in mind that this additional XP is not affected by the multiplier. I think if you're wanting to get a max cape or push for rank one, this has potential for some methods. But as someone who actually tried this relic last league, it's very, very lame. It really super duper buffs methods with a lot of stacking XP like barb fishing, but overall the league's XP multiplier is good enough for nine out of 10 things. All right, it's time for tier five, which is a new one for today. Definitely one of the hardest choices in this entire leagues, in my opinion. As for the passive effects, XP multiplier increased from eight to 12 times. And as for the relics, Treasure Arbiter. TLDR, you get a lot more clues. All clues have the lowest number of steps. Every cask will roll for the max amount. And Emote, Fallow, and Charlie clue steps no longer have item requirements. Everything about this relic is very, very nice, hands down, no questions asked. If you want slash need clue items, which in most cases, you probably don't. Even a lot of range built this leagues won't even go for ranger boots due to the tier six passive. So like, if you really need to be doing something niche, or maybe you want to pet hunt a bloodhound in leagues, sure. And another thing to keep in mind is supposedly the clue points and amounts and tasks and all that is lowered from last time. And if you take the clue compass, you know, that's like pretty strong. I don't know, kind of devalues this relic in my opinion. Bad news about this next relic, guys. No more PP. It is now PM. Production Master is a really good pick for, um, well, production skills. Most actions will be processed instantly, so a really nice combination with Friendly Forager. Really good backup for all the tier 1 relics you don't take. Overall, pretty solid. And then there's the Slayer Master Relic. Oh man, what a boring but very strong relic. Mostly depends on what bosses you're going to be facing. If you're using gear sets for bonuses. Also, I guess if you're taking more attainment or not, because if you don't, you don't have a slayer helm, and that very, very, very heavily devalues this relic choice. But unlock all slayer task pricks for free. Nice quality of life. Kind of a small time saver compared to the pre-existing passives. Rune pouch, herb sack, looting bags, all free, and skip and block tasks for free, all kind of the same, although very, very nice. The big thing here though is that you are always on task for eligible monsters which works on bosses and echo bosses. This means that if you're taking Mauritania and can freely wear a Slayer helmet in your build, this is a very, very strong damage bonus to um, pretty much like 90% of the content you're gonna be doing. Like this works on Zuck, this works on Jad if you're that bad, this works on most of the echo bosses, like I said. Probably the biggest thing it won't work in is like raids. And I think maybe some things in raids count as Slayer monsters, but I don't I don't really know the technicalities on, on what's what. Pretty much what I heard from Jagex is that if it gives Slayer XP, this relic affects it. So if it gives Slayer XP in the base game, it gets boosted all the time with a Slayer helmet on. So pretty good relic. We're on to tier number six, which actually has no passive buff, but is honestly what I would call maybe the biggest controversial tier. Total Recall versus Banker's Note. Honestly, guys, I don't really care what you pick. To me, Total Recall sounds kind of nice, but it's also kind of bad. You can store any coordinates alongside your hit points, prayer, and spec. Then you can teleport back to these coordinates at any time. No cooldown or anything. Okay, well, um, it doesn't save buff stats. It doesn't save funny specs like Soul Reaper stacks. And worst of all, you can't teleport in instances. I'm trying to think of one instance I can set a teleport that could benefit me. I'm thinking of skipping the run to Dagonoth Kings. Well, introducing Banker's Note. You are functionally a bank now, so you won't be leaving. Probably won't be dying. And since you can just carry around 40,000 sharks, you don't really need the teleport anymore. This point gets thrown out a lot, but rune crafting, um, yeah, I'm carrying 100,000 pure essence and finishing the skill in five minutes instead of 15 like everybody else, okay? Generally, the only example of total recall being funny or useful I could think of is maybe the agility pyramid teleporting back for the tops, but it doesn't work for normal courses and it doesn't give you the XP drop. So I don't know, maybe there's a hidden strat. Maybe you're going as guardian. It's good in God Wars. I can't think of anything that I want it for. So I'll definitely be carrying around my bang in my pocket. Thanks. Tier seven passives. XP multiplier increased from 12 all the way up to 16. That's the last XP boost you're going to get. 
Also, back to the combat passive from earlier, you're going to be getting 32 times the combat experience at this point. So yeah, those skills are going to be maxed for sure. Now, speaking of both relics and pockets, Pocket Kingdom. Literally the entire functional kingdom of miscellanea in your pocket. I really love the idea of this relic, but I don't think I'd ever take it. Workers gather twice as many resources and gather them every hour instead of day. Mathing this out as an example, like 34,000 maple logs daily, but why though? What are you, what are you gonna do with any kingdom loot at this point that you're getting 16 times experience rates? And also you have to maintain effectively like 12 times the GP since they work for 50% less, but produce hourly instead. I don't know, really funny relic, but in my opinion, not a tier seven. The Grimoire relic though, oh boy. I honestly don't like how strong this is for a bad player like myself. Essentially all prayers, all spells, no need to do raids for rigor. No need to change regions for piety. No need to go to the desert for ancients if you really wanted those for some reason. I mean, this relic is super hard for me to say no to. Finally, we have Overgrown. Holy moly, they done turn RuneScape farming into an idle game. Seed Vault access from anywhere, pretty decent. But the real meat and potatoes of this is crops never die, 75% chance to save seeds, all crops automatically get ultra compost, and when a seed grows, it gets auto replanted, assuming you have the same seed in your vaults and you are online because it doesn't farm offline. But I'm so tempted to take this relic and skip piety for the hell of it. Long term, it's not very strong, but functionally idle 99 farming once you gather some seeds are just hilarious to me. Finally, we've made it to the very last tier, or I guess an extra tier from last leagues, tier number eight. Yet again, no passive buff for this one, but contains the strongest relics yet. Starting with what I'm taking hands down, honestly, last stand. If you die, um, you just don't. And for the next 16 ticks, you're immortal, locked to one HP. Massive Derox synergy here. After the effect ends, you heal based on the damage dealt, which in almost all cases should heal you back up to full. And the real funny business here, what I'm actually looking forward to, combat stats are instantly boosted to 255, but rapidly drained down to base plus 15. First of all, bootleg super-ish kind of combat potions, which might have its value here and there, depending on how lazy you are. But for the one to two attacks you have at level 255, you have the potential to put out some insane DPS. And then for the next few attacks, you still have some higher than normal hits because you're still buffed way beyond like an overload even, but whatever, I really care about the burst damage potential. Next up is the Guardian Relic. I really like this relic on paper and I did take it last league. It's kind of like having a duo partner that covers your weak styles, except in this league, if you're taking range, you don't actually have a weak style. And in general, it's kind of just like a three DPS increase. So pretty much whatever. It's a nice quality of life for certain encounters like the Inferno. And I'm assuming that'll carry on and be very nice to have in the Colosseum for laziness, but not that exciting to me. Last up is the Specialist Relic. If I'm not mistaken, this is an extremely weaker version of Last League's Relic. Maybe it's on par, I'm not really sure. All spec attacks cost 20% and have plus 100% increased accuracy. For each failed accuracy roll with a spec, you gain 10% energy back, which is half. And whenever you kill an NPC, you restore 15% of special attack energy. One of the most powerful special attack weapons this league, at least in my opinion from what I've tried to map out, the Sunlight Spear doesn't actually benefit from this relic because it works off as of stacks and you don't really get extra stacks or get the spec more. I mean, you kind of do if spec energy is your limiting factor. If you wanted to go for a niche build with the Dog Sword or maybe Xerite Crossbow like last week, you could take this relic, but definitely not for me. All right, with all that information out of the way, it's time to talk about my master plan. Mauritania, Valamore, Reminic, or as I'm going to call it, the big old Darox Gambler. Like I said at the start of the video, my first main goal is to one-shot Vorkath. So first off, why Vorkath? Well, according to my very not good Darox bombing math, with the last stand relic, max gear, stats, piety, echo gloves, the whole nine yards, that leaves us with a one or two attack window with an incredibly low chance of hitting somewhere around 18 or 1900 damage in a single hit. That's absolutely insane. Obviously, the chance of hitting that is once in a league? Rarer than that? I, I don't even know. But since Vorkath has a max HP total of 750 and is also weak to the salve EI, theoretically we only need to proc half as many echoes or half as high of a hit, which 
sort of kind of doubles my odds. I mean, okay, I could mathematically spend thousands of hours trying to one-shot Soul Heredit, but that doesn't really sound like it would be that fun and it realistically is not going to happen. And at the end of the day, that is what I'm trying to get out of playing leagues this time around is just to have fun. Speaking of fun though, here's some other builds that I really like the sound of but aren't exactly for me per se. Up first, the Wilderness. Kopesh, huge AoE hits. The shield is actually kind of nice. Immediate downside, wieldy content in leagues. Apparently not very fun. Don't really like wilderness content in general. I'm also not trying to get grief for the first few days if that's what I wanted to go. Second build I really like is the full justice your tank twisted bow. Um, If I felt comfortable farming a mega rare and the full armor set from the theater of blood, this would have been my build of choice, I think. Unfortunately, my only Tob experience consists of me soloing in single entry mode for the quest a long time ago, and I don't really know anyone to carry me, so I think that's a hard pass. Okay, build number three, Funniest Spray Lizard, 7 town melee range, that just sounds fun, need I say more. Build number four, pretty much any spec build, Dog Sword, ZCB, whatever you find that works well. The potential is there, but for me, I just don't enjoy clicking the spec bar 24-7. I think there's a lot to be said with build variety and choices this league. I, I think you could really go anything. I don't know what you'd do mage. I did mage mainly last league. I didn't get a shadow though because I didn't get lucky and I just couldn't be bothered to keep farming tombs of a masket. So I was like, nah, I'll do this in it. So I'm not really sure what magic would be this time around. I think it's roughly the same as just go shadow hit 200s or some baloney, but that's the end of the fun builds that I think would actually be decent. I have tried to math out some weird things, like with Perilous Moon's gear. I actually don't know if they're going to be really good. I don't think so. Anything I could think of ranged inferior as hell to just darts or blowpipe or twisted bow, obviously. I don't know how to pronounce these, but I thought that would have been a funny build. Any Anything melee is pretty much chasing procs. If you've never chased procs for a build in any sort of game before, you either like it or you hate it. I think fundamentally Derox is just strong as hell and going for the meme is what I want to do the most. Obviously, a scythe, really freaking good, but you're gonna have to do Tob for a scythe and I don't really want to be doing that personally. Anyways, though, I did say earlier that I don't enjoy planning out every single step, and I will, in fact, be winging a lot of it. But to those of you that want that sort of thing, here's an incredible doc from the League's Discord, which I would recommend you just yoink. Or just go copy your favorite streamer, I guess. It doesn't really matter. But that's it for my League's 5 plans. If I find the time to both play and edit a video, I'll put out a day one or maybe two recap video. Maybe an end of the meme build conclusion after I finish my goal. I don't really know yet. I will obviously try taking on the Echo Soul Heredit if I can. I want to at some point pivot into a Sunlight Spear build. Um, if I can't, that's not going to ever happen. But um, yep, that's it for this. Huge thank you to the channel members you see on screen. And I'll see you all in leagues. Gotta get this video edited. Chop, chop. I'm running out of time. It's two days till leagues. My, my freaking video's going to come out. I'm going to Thanksgiving the day after leagues too. Holy hell.